Welcome to video 25 on fun with Arduino. We are going to start a new subject which is the rotary encoder. It is a fully digital device with which we can change variables inside the Arduino uh, by rotating a knob. And well that of course gives us a whole lot of opportunities to for instance uh, control the brightness of light or control a servo motor uh, or well the sky is the limit with the applications that we can use it. Let's have a closer look at the um, encoder. This is it. First of all it has an incredibly low price. This one uh, sells for just 50 euro cents. So it's always nice to have a couple in your tool bag. The five connections are ground and the five volt of the Arduino. Then we have a switch over here. When we press this shaft, of, of course we put a nice button uh, on it. Uh, if we press it, then the switch is connected to ground and otherwise it is floating. And then we have a clock and a data line. They are often also called A and B because their signal is exactly similar. The signal looks like this. If we rotate the knob, then over time we get this A signal over here and we get the B signal, which is exactly the same, but it is shifted 90 degrees, so to speak. And by that, because of that shift, we can not only count the pulses, but we can also deduct if we were rotating clockwise or counterclockwise. How does that work? Well, suppose in our software, we monitor signal A and we try to find the low to high transitions. If the time is running from left to right in this diagram, then over here on the red dotted line I have my first low to high transition. At that moment in time I'm going to look at signal B and I see that it is high. And then further in time again I have a low to high transition and signal B again is high. So that means I have a situation where a low to high transition in A and signal B is high, but the other way around, if I start rotating in the other direction, I come across a low to high transition in A over here, the first one, and at that moment in time signal B is low. And further in time, over here I have my next low to high transition, and again signal B is low. So apparently I'm now rotating in the other direction. If it is counterclockwise or clockwise, yeah, that depends a bit on how you connected the signals uh, or which one you are monitoring, but of course you can simply in the software switch that around. So this is how it works and well let's make some software to, uh, yeah, to use these A and B signals and see what we can do with it. This is a piece of code with which we can read out the rotary encoder. Let's have a quick walk through. First we define uh, the three pins, the data, clock and switch. Then I also define just for fun an LED uh, on a pin that has pulse with modulation capabilities because we are going to control an LED just for fun. I also defined an increment value which we can change if we like. Uh, yeah, I'm now using increment 1 but if you like 2, 5 or 10 that can be uh, placed over here. Then we are going to try find a low to high transition in the clock signal. So we made here a byte, a clock and clock old, so that we can compare the two and know that we had a transition. And the same we do with our switch. And then finally we uh, have the uh, declaration of our rotary value. That is the variable that we are going to change. Just for fun, we are, this application is just reading the encoder, we are not yet doing anything, well, besides uh, changing the brightness of the LED. Okay, let's go to setup. In setup, of course, first we uh, create our three input pins, and then we read for the first time the clock old, the current clock value and the current switch value. And then we simply do some serial printing to say that we are ready and we are now 
reading and changing the rotary value. Then we go on to our loop and the first thing that we are going to do there is uh, read our switch. Uh, first of all of course we uh, read the pin and give that value to the variable encoder switch and then we are going to see if it has changed from the old value. So if the old value is 1 and the new value is 0 then I know that I had a high to low transition and then I can do something in this uh, software we are only saying that the switch is pressed but in, in another in a, in a serious application of course this is the spot where we can put the code that we need to run once the uh, button is pressed then I have a little delay over here and usually we don't like delays but this one uh, can be here because we are in this software doing nothing else than reading the encoder. In future video we are going to change it of course again. But now uh, we have this little delay because every switch can bounce, uh, which means it is a mechanical construction and if you press it, the electrical contract uh, often does not come at once, but it bounces a couple of times and then it is stable. And the Arduino is fast enough for that bouncing, which is usually in a millisecond range, to, yeah, to see that bouncing. And then we can think that we have uh, three switch presses, but be, well, actually it was one press. That's why we have a little delay to, yeah, to avoid that bouncing coming through in our software. Okay, final statement over here is that now that we have seen uh, this the, have read the switch we can uh, change the old value into the new value and uh, then we are going to read our rotary uh, we are going to read the clock pin and then again if the clock was zero the old one was zero and the new one is one then I know that I have a, a low to high transition and that was the transition I was on the lookout for. If I have such a transition then I read my data pin and if my data pin was high yeah, then I was running in let's say the clockwise direction and I am now going to add the increment. If the data pin was low I am going to subtract the increment. So this is how we change our rotary value. And what are we going to do with that rotary value? Well, in this case, in this application, we are only going to print it on screen and we are going to use it for the pulse width modulation output so that we can see an LED change brightness. Also here I have this little empty bounce delay which in uh, uh, the next video we are going to change of course and then uh, we have uh, our clock old is going to become our clock new yeah well this is it the code is just 43 lines long and now we have a complete rotary encoder reading let's try it out let's upload this code and start a video at the same time then we can see if we can change a variable with the rotary encoder. Yeah, I'm opening the serial monitor uh, and here is my encoder and I can start rotating. And this is the LED that I connected on the pulse width modulation output. So yeah, may, I don't know if the video shows but I went from 0 to 1. My LED is lighting and the serial monitor gives me the current value. Well, we have made an, uh, an, an LED dimmer right now. What happens if I go from 0 to minus 1? Uh, well, the serial interface gives minus 1 because that uh, is an integer value, which is positive and negative. But my LED, uh, the pulse width modulation, uses a byte. Uh, so now minus 1 is equal to 255, so it is on maximum brightness. Well, that's all how we programmed this. If we want to change that, we can. Well, let's uh, say that in the next video we are going to build a real application, a useful one. Uh, we are going to control a servo motor, because 
um, when you use a servo motor for whatever application, be it a garage door or a beam of a railway crossing, or maybe you, you control your uh, turnouts on a, uh, on a railway track with them, you always have to find the minimum and the maximum angle that you need for that particular application. And we, we, if we can tune our servo with this rotary encoder and read out the value on the serial monitor, then we can very conveniently find those minimum and maximum angles and then transfer those to our application software. So next video we're going to build a servo tune application.